everybody, it's Monday's movie night and I just got done watching 2005's The Constant Gardener starring Ray Fiennes, Rachel Weiss, Danny Houston, Bill Nighy and Pete Possefwhite. Um, this I've only watched once before and I absolutely hated it. Um, it bored the pants off me. So when I saw it was going to be my movie tonight, I was like, mm. and you know what, if I hadn't been sticking to, like, the row, if I could have skipped and gone to another movie, I would have happily skipped this. But I'm glad I didn't, because I actually enjoyed this a lot more this time. And I don't know if I was just in the right mood, uh, or just wasn't in the mood last time or what, but... Um, I genuinely enjoyed it a lot more. Um, it tells a story of um, Justin Quayle who's widowed um, after his um, wife, uh, who's kind of a, a care worker um, uh, aide in um, uh, Kenya, um, when she's, uh, she's killed because she starts investigating uh, these drugs that she realises are actually killing people. Um, and there's this big conspiracy and her husband's not really clued into it. Um, and then he starts to, to see things and, and goes on the uh, kind of trying to find answers to when he realises that his uh, wife and her uh, kind of work partner were murdered. Um, and it's a British film, it, it does suffer with something that these kind of British films keep trying to do, is they keep trying to do their own thing and try to be artsy with all these funky camera shots and that. Um, it, and it does tend to drag in the way that some British films seem to do sometimes. But that's made up for by the beautiful shots of um, uh, Nairobi, uh, etc. Um, the story's really well told. Ray Fiennes is amazing in this. Uh, I've seen him in some great roles like uh, Red Dragon, etc. Um, and you just really felt his kind of uh, awkwardness when he first meets up with uh, Tessa, played by Rachel Weisz. Um, and then, like, there's this suspicion, there's a kind of, you know, she's off, she's doing some investigating that she can't tell him about and that. And he's a bit suspicious of her, and there's kind of this friction. Um, but then, you know, you see him as the mourning widow, and it's heartbreaking. Um, he's amazing in that role. Um, Danny Houston plays this really creepy, well prick basically um kind of lusting after um tessa uh and you know kind of this creepy evil guy uh he's really good in that role um everybody was spot on um look at the cinematography was beautiful um even the funky shots that get thrown in every now and then and you're sat there going why is this here I didn't mind. You get they they feel like they're part of this disjointed thoughts of Justin as he goes on this travel, and especially as he's trying to then go kind of anonymously so he doesn't get traced, etc. Which of course he does. Um, it's really cliched. Um, unfortunately, it is really cliched uh, in the kind of conspiracy drama movie genre kind of way. Um, if I had to nitpick the film, it does this thing that really pisses me off. Not all the time, but for the most part, really gets on my nerve. When at the, very, the movie starts with um, Tessa and uh, Arnold's death uh, in this kind of car crash. Um, and um, it starts with that. And then it kind of skips back to, like, Tessa first meeting Justin and that. And that's then interspersed with some modern day of Justin seeing the body and stuff. And you're skipping all over the place and you've no clue as to where this is. 
where you're at in their relationship when you go to the flashbacks and sometimes there's no warning that you've even gone into flashbacks um they try to change that with the filter on the camera etc um certainly more so later in the movie um but i, I just felt some of the skipping around at the beginning um a bit disjoint more disjointed than it was supposed to be um but the reason why it annoys me is because you have that where she dies so you know that's the key point about this whole movie and then you have the flashbacks and that and then that leads up like midway through it kind of catches up with the beginning of the movie and i hate that i hate this whole we know she's gonna die i get that we're then seeing what leads up to that but it, it just oh, it just i don't know what it is it's just something that's I see being used more and more in movies and TV shows even and I just it just really grates on me sometimes. Sometimes it works um, but I just didn't feel like it was necessary in this case. They could have easily started with them starting out and then and then this big you know the crash and stuff and then him going from that point from there. Um, I don't know what why the decision was made to do it the other way um, but I guess that's just the filmmaker's choice um, that's why I don't make movies <laughs> I guess um, but no otherwise it's a good drama um, nice conspiracy drama I don't feel like you properly get all the answers but as with all these conspiracies do you ever get the proper answers um, you know it's all just kind of thrown away in this kind of Oh, well, the British government weren't actually doing it. They were covering for so-and-so and this and the other. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Um, so, yeah, if you like crime dramas, um, uh, not crime dramas, conspiracy kind of dramas with romance thrown in, um, if you want to see some light Rachel Weiss nudity, um, <laughs> yeah, don't go for it for a Ray Fiennes nudity because that was kind of lacklustre. Um, but if you're interested in Rachel Weisz nudity, then uh, yeah, if you're after, I, I picked this up as a, um, it was kind of, uh, I'd just seen Rachel Weisz in Runaway Jury, which I really enjoyed. Um, and this was really, really heavily um, advertised uh, at the time that I picked it up. Uh, I think... It was kind of touted as the next English patient, and I hadn't seen the English patient. Um, but, you know, I'm a sucker for chick flicks, so I was under the impression that this was that. Um, but it's actually not. I mean, it kind of is a chick flick, but not so much as you would expect. Certainly not as much as I was expecting. Um, but, yeah, no, if you want a good drama film... Uh, like I said, with beautiful scenery of Kenya, etc. Um, with a gritty kind of seedy underbelly. Then do check it out. Uh, it's two hours long. And it actually feels longer than that. And I don't know if that's in a bad way or what. Um, it felt... I guess it's because it felt like there was a lot of story in it. Um, so I guess in a good way it feels longer. Uh, but it is only two hours long. So if you get the chance... Um, do pick up uh, 2005's uh, The Constant Gardener. That was tonight's movie. We'll be back again tomorrow. But of course, you know the line by now. For now, this is Sketch, <laughs> signing out.